Thank you so much for being here. In two days, we are about to leave to go to UFDC for the convention that is happening in Bellevue, Washington. Our doll shop is sponsoring the luncheon event, the Katie Crusa event that our beloved Jonathan Green was planning and doing. And since he passed away, we are going in his place to honor him and to celebrate his legacy and everything that he has done and how much of a friend he is to all of us. And I wanted to make a video to show you our display that we are going to actually be bringing with us, packing up in just a second, and taking with us to the luncheon. I know at the luncheon, I'm not gonna be able to make videos. I'm not gonna be able to do any filming. If I get a couple pictures, that will be great. But I, I know it's going to just be so busy and we're gonna be talking so much. And there are so many of us you watching right now that want to be there and cannot be there. So I want to show you our display and then in the next video that is coming after this one, you are going to see the program that I have prepared for the luncheon. So thank you for being here. We have been working on this for months and we are finally here. I am so grateful to be in a position in my life and with our company to be able to go and to do this. And I consider it the greatest honor that I have had as an adult and in this industry to go and to speak about Jonathan Green and to sponsor this event and to honor him in any way that I possibly can. It is a very, very, very personal thing for me and that is why I have invested and done so much. The only thing is I wish I could do more and um, but I know that we're, we've done a lot and I am really just grateful to share it with you. So come on in here and I want to share with you our display that uh, Christopher has put together and it is just so beautiful. On one side of the display we have a Raggedy Ann collection that of course I uh, put together with some of my dolls. I'm going to start from the beginning to the end. So the first thing that I did and we have all of these flowers that are in on centerpieces for every table at the luncheon and they are hand crocheted by Chinese grandmothers at our factory and you're gonna hear the story of the Chinese grandmothers a little bit later but they are just absolutely beautiful and everyone at the luncheon will get to take a couple of these beautifully handmade flowers. I wanted a centerpiece that really reflected Jonathan and I thought that the crocheted flowers was just absolutely perfect because he is does and did so much with handiwork and teaching people and he loved to to knit and these are crocheted but uh, I know he would approve so um, we started there and then in the exhibit of Raggedy Ann's we have several antique Raggedy Ann's these two are from my collection this one is from Jonathan Green's collection and if you're wondering how I got these dolls Jonathan Green's brother sent me four dolls to have and to put on for our display and I am eternally eternally grateful these two dolls are Voland inspired that are made by Jonathan Green one I, I bought them actually both on eBay and I am just so so thankful to have them the Birkenstocks this is extremely poignant he wore Birkenstocks every, every day. I never saw him in anything other than Birkenstocks. And I have a pair of my mom's shoes out at my house and I've never put them away. I've kept them right where they were left when she was staying with me. And they bring me a lot of comfort. And I thought it might've been an odd request, but I requested his family to send me a pair of shoes and they did. So these are Jonathan's Birkenstocks that he bought in Leipzig, Germany and I cherish them. They, they, they are going to stay out. We are going to have a permanent display here at the shop to honor Jonathan after we come back. And these will be a big part of that. And I think they're beautiful. We have little potted flowers to add to the display. And then uh, this Raggedy Andy was part of my mom's collection. This one was part of Jonathan's collection. This one right here I had to put because Jonathan thought it was so funny and sweet that I bought this one because nobody was buying it. It was listed online for six months because he had been in a fire and he smelled like firewood. When I had bought it and put it on my Facebook page, Jonathan messaged me immediately and he said, I was wondering who bought those. And he said, I had been watching and wanting to, and thinking that I should buy them, but I just didn't. And he just was so glad that I rescued the, this sweet little guy. He has since aired out and doesn't smell like fire anymore, but um, it's just, it's, he's so perfect to bring along to our exhibit. 
This doll, Jonathan would have absolutely loved. She is a mint Raggedy Ann that I have featured on my channel. And then we have two more from Jonathan's collection. This is a beautiful handmade Raggedy Andy. He's just absolutely amazing. And then a, a handmade Raggedy Ann from his collection. Look at her striped feet. She's just absolutely wonderful. And then we also have pictures of Jonathan, some of my favorite pictures of him. So, oh, and Miss Raggedy Ann too, of course, with her little, with her little nub of hair that is left, Jonathan would approve. And then, of course, a uh, Volan beloved Belindi, who actually was in the fire as well. You can tell that she has, um, she is in a little bit better condition, but she was also, uh, she came with the fire, Andy. But I also have uh, pictures of Jonathan doing what he absolutely loved, which was teaching and being a teacher at Waldorf schools where he lived. And so there he is teaching handiwork. And this is one of my absolute favorite pictures of him. I hope you can get in there and see that of him leaning down and teaching a little boy how to knit. And they were all sitting in a circle. Part of the uh, thing that I am uh, doing is that I, over the years when I was little, one of the love letters that I uh, wrote to my mother and in the form of writing a letter, it wasn't, I was actually crocheting, but I used to make her dolls. And on every Christmas, I would give my mom either a Raggedy Ann or a Raggedy Andy or even a beloved Belindy doll. And I started making them at a very young age and I gave one to her every single year for a lot of years. And there's a whole progression that you can see. I started with one I made out of a sock. And there's his green hair. And then kind of moved up the ladder a little bit. I have this little set right here. This The head on this Raggedy Ann always just kills me. I just love her. She is so funny. I tried so hard. I was, I really thought I was in the big time when I made these ones right here. And, you know, they just bring back so many memories. Hopefully you can see these well. This was the first set that I was real proud of. I just remember just being so incredibly proud of these larger ones right here. And I did these over the years, so you can see where I really started to progress. Of course, over here now you have to see these ones I was regressing. These are some of the earliest ones. This one I really love. Her face is, her eyeballs are just crosses. <laughs> I didn't quite master the eyeballs on these ones yet, but I'm sharing these because if you have been with me for a long time, then you probably saw that I did a video where I showed all of these to Jonathan Green and he thought they were wonderful. And it was a really good memory. We were on one of those split screen videos and I showed him the beloved Belindy that I had made and just all the raggedy ends that I had made over the years. And after Jonathan passed away, I had a tremendous amount of grief inside of me and I needed to put that somewhere. And I felt very, very restless for days and days and for several weeks, I, I was very restless and I didn't have anywhere for that grief to go. So I started crocheting again and I hadn't crocheted in so long. And I looked up videos on YouTube and I had many, many, many versions and revisions of my dolls. But at the very end, finally came up with little miniature versions, crocheted of in the likeness of the dolls that Jonathan made. And I really wanted to get the face to look just like the ones that Jonathan made and the hair and everything about them, little tiny stitches, and I really loved them. And I thought it would be a wonderful thing for our event to make them and to uh, give them out to everybody at the event. Now, of course, there's no way I could do that for 80 people, but I showed pictures to my factory and they said, no, we don't really crochet, but we have grandmothers that do. And so the Chinese grandmothers over the last three months have been hand crocheting these wonderful dolls. And I want to show you over here what we have for our attendees. We do have very small amounts of them as well that uh, we are going to list on our website that are all, all of the money is gonna go to charity uh, for Jonathan Green. The event has already happened, so it's not, a, it's not a surprise for them anymore, but they're gonna get this and then a beautiful paper doll that Diana Vining designed and made, a Forever Friends paper doll that has a Edith Flack Ackley doll 
a Katie Cruza doll, a heart-shaped purse, a Raggedy Ann, a little basket full of knit, an outfit, and a picture of Jonathan. And then the tags also say to my friend Jonathan Green, I'm really proud of these dolls. I worked really hard to be able to get them and to offer them and to give them as a gift. And um, I hope everyone loves them and always thinks of Jonathan when they see them. Sometimes you just need a little crochet cuddler and you can just kind of feel better sometimes, I think. Another important part of our event is we have beautiful raffle items that are lovingly made by people that really cared about Jonathan. I purchased several of them and then several of them were made for us. The ones that I purchased are vintage Katie Crusa postcards. These are postcards that were actually used that have messages in German on the back and they are so darn sweet. So I purchased those. Lee Feichert made a beautiful Katie Crusa doll wardrobe uh, with patterns from Jonathan Green's book, which I just think is so amazing. And Lee Feichert's an, an incredible doll artist. And the outfits are kind of spread around. And I just love that they're made from Jonathan Green's book. It is so sweet. Another thing that uh, is just wonderful and it's going to make the event a celebration is Lee Feichert made these wonderful doll party hats with Jonathan's logo, his Katie Cruza logo from his doll that he designed and I just I think these are wonderful and they're gonna look so cute on everyone's dolls everyone's going to receive a doll and the hat's just perfect so we have those which are a gift to attendees and then Marcy Molly who loved Jonathan very very much made these outfits which are just wonderful one of them is a Raggedy Ann themed so you can actually I don't need to show you pictures they're right here this one is so cute with the Raggedy Ann fabric Oh, it's just darling. Thank you, Marcy. And then the other one that she made is this one with all the bees, and it is so, so sweet. So cute. This canvas right here is a, is a part of doll, dolls from Jonathan's collection that he sent me that picture. Uh, there's a wonderful seller on eBay that made these beautiful aprons, uh, and, and they are in Germany. And so I got these aprons from Germany, and... I have uh, one of these dolls, I think it was this one, was donated by uh, Sherry from Gigi's and Sherry's Dolls in Chicago. And then the other one I bought, I think that one's hers. They're very similar and they're very, very sweet. We have wonderful, wonderful giveaways, just raffle items for the attendees of this event so that they can have some fun. Raffle items are meant to be exciting and to have fun. And that's, that's why I wanted to have uh, some really sweet raffle items. So I know that the event's going to go really well. Of course, when you're seeing this, the event has already happened. And so I'm just going to tell you it went well. I wish that you were there. But since you cannot be there, the next best thing that I can do is to make this type of video content and put it on the internet. So please stay tuned. Our next video that is airing right after this one is my tribute video to Jonathan. And I hope that it brings some closure to your heart. It is helping me to, to do this and to help process what has happened and instill what is going on. It's gonna take us a very, very long time to recover from this, but by celebrating him and making sure that he stays prevalent in our hearts and our minds, that's how we can, as a community, get through this. And I really appreciate you being a part of this and the story. And I will always love you, Jonathan. Thank you for watching. Bye.